Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the third annual Funding Focus Conference. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, it's wonderful to see you. We've even had t-shirts made. Third annual Funding Focus Conference 2021. Um, so the, together with the team, we, we've got the t-shirts and we are looking forward to taking you through a packed program today. I just want to set out a few things as, as an uh, opening address. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is actually reflect on the journey over the past two years. For those of you who've been with us the whole time, uh, our first event was on the 25th of November, 2019, uh, back in the days when we could meet in person, and that was held at the London Stock Exchange. Um, so it was a live in-person event. We filled the theater there. We had over 100 people, and it was a, a fantastic first event. And that was the event where I realized two key things. Number one, I realized that this isn't just a UK issue. Uh, this is a global issue, and I'm delighted that we've attracted a global audience. Um, we, had, we had comments in our social media posts back then from 10 different countries around the world, and I'll talk a little bit more about our audience in, in a moment, but, but I, it opened my eyes to the fact that this is a big uh, global uh, issue. Um, the second thing, oops, my background's gone funny. There we are. Uh, sorry. The second thing um, that I want to reflect on is, is this is our third conference. Uh, so we ran our second annual conference a year ago uh, on the 25th of November, 2020. Uh, and that was obviously held online. And as a result of the feedback that we had from people, um, we made some changes in 2021. So we've run a series of three quarterly events in March, June, and September uh, before running this big annual uh, event, um, which, as I said, is our third uh, annual Congress. So we've run three annual events. We've run three uh, quarterly events. And in addition to that, we've had two cohorts coming through our short course, uh, which we call Funding Focus Explore, which is an introduction to funding and find, uh, fundraising and finance. And I'll be talking more about the next cohort of the Explore program when I do my closing uh, remarks at the end of the day. One of the other really uh, important things and things that really drives us is our commitment to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And we support goals four and five. And for those of you who are aware of, of a thing called a together band, uh, which is a thing that's linked to the Sustainable Development Goals, I'm wearing my two together bands here. Uh, this one is uh, Sustainable Development Goal number five, which is gender equality. This one is sustainable development goal number four, which is uh, quality education. And what we do at all of our events and at all of our programs, we make donations to charities that support these activities, uh, that support SDGs four and five. Um, and we are making those, we will be making donations again today. Uh, so we're gonna be making a donation of a dollar for every person who attends today. Um, and so far, through our various events, we have given 100 days of tr vocational training to women from disadvantaged backgrounds in the Philippines uh, to learn uh, schools, sorry, to learn skills um, in, in the culinary trade. We've given 85 days of finance and business skills training to women in Zimbabwe to enable them to start businesses to support their families. And we've given 11 days of youth development programs in South Africa. So we're still working through what exactly we'll be uh, supporting uh, today, but we will be com continuing our commitment to support charities that are aligned to UN Sustainable Development Goals 4 and 5. So our audience, that's you. Um, and first of all, I want to just say a great big thank you. It's wonderful to see you here again. For those of you who are here the first time, Welcome, it's great to have you. For those who've been to all of our events, fantastic, uh, love your support and thank you very much. Over the last two years, we have, with very limited spend on marketing, we have attracted a global audience of over a thousand entrepreneurs in more than 30 countries 
on six continents. So the only continent we haven't got is Antarctica. So if anyone is listening today who knows an entrepreneur in Antarctica, please put a comment in the chat that just says Antarctica, and we'll reach out and let's get an introduction so that we can say that we are representing all seven continents on the world. Um, so thank you again very much to that. Um, the next thing I want to talk to as an opening remark, and T, if you could put up the, uh, the cover on the slides. Uh, for those of you who are following my social media, I am in the final stages of writing my second book, um, which is going to be called Funded Female Founders, Unlocking $4 Trillion of Economic Value Currently Being Left on the Table. It's currently standing at about 28,000 words, so it's nearly done. Uh, the book is set up in three parts, um, which links to the FFF, Funded Female Founders. So part one is an analysis of what's the current situation? What's it really like out there today? And I'm looking at latest statistics on what's going on in the world of fundraising and, and how uh, the, the various statistics are showing up for female and underrepresented entrepreneurs. Um, so that's the first chapter, uh, sorry, the first part of the book. I also um, feature a number of stories of uh, entrepreneurs who have successfully raised money. So yes, it's difficult, but let's have a look at some people who've actually done it successfully and what can we learn from them. Um, I then look at the whole principle of cognitive bias because one of the things I've discovered over the last two years is whilst there is unquestionably bias against female and underrepresented entrepreneurs and every statistic supports it, I believe sincerely that in the vast majority of cases, it's not a conscious bias, that it's an unconscious bias. And it's something significant that we need to be aware of and, and, and address. Um, and I'll touch on that again in my next bit about some of the current research. Um, the second part of the book is all about the fundraising process and what does it take to raise funding? Who are the different types of people you can look to speak to, whether it's angels or venture capital or private equity, debt funding, crowdfunding? We take you through the example um, of, of a business going through each of the different stages of fundraising. So that's part two of the book. And then part three of the book is what I'm still working on. And part three of the book is looking forward into the future. It's, it's all about what does a fairer world look like in fundraising terms? I, I, I could do fairer world in its greater uh, full definition, but, I, but that's just too much. That would do my head in. So, but in the context of fundraising for female and underrepresented entrepreneurs, what does a fairer world look like? And I'm looking at things like what needs to happen politically? What needs to happen economically? What needs to happen socially? And as part of that work, I'm actually very interested in interviewing people who have an opinion on what a fairer future looks like. So if you are interested in participating in an interview with me, um, it, it would take not more than 30 minutes of your time. And we would go through those three issues, political, social, economic, what needs to change? What does a fairer world look like? If you would like to have an interview, please just type book interview into the chat and Taryn will get in touch with you after today's event um, to set up a call. And, um, and, and then you'll be able to, to help me play, uh, you'll, you'll be able to play a role and help me to close out the final section of my book. <coughs> in return, I will give you a mention uh, in the acknowledgements of the book and I will send you a signed copy. So if you'd be interested in that, please just type book interview into the chat. Thank you very much. And the new book will be coming out in the spring of 2022. So I just want to touch briefly on um, some other research that I've come across in, in, in the last few months. And the first one is I, I met uh, a, a woman who is a, an assistant professor at London Business School. Uh, her name is Dana Kanza, and she and I have had a number of calls. And she has done some incredible research when she was doing her PhD at Columbia University, she, um, she took 
all of the video interviews from the New York Tech Crunch Disrupt pitching competition over a 10 year period. So there were hundreds and hundreds of videos. So anyone who entered the Tech Crunch Disrupt pitching competition, they were filmed as they pitched and not only their pitch, but also their Q&A. And she downloaded all of this video content and did a huge piece of an analysis looking at the types of questions that the investors were asking to the entrepreneurs. And what she found was quite amazing. She, there, there is another piece of research that a professor from Columbia did where he talked about different types of language that he characterized as promotion language and prevention language. Now, promotion language is all about what's possible, what's positive, what are the opportunities. And for example, um, a promotion question might be, how are you going to grow your market share by 50% over the next year? Prevention questions, on the other hand, are all about protection and tend to have a more of a negative connotation. And so a prevention question around revenue might be, well, how are you going to protect your revenue base? And, and what are you going to do to stop competitors from, from stealing your customers? And what Dana discovered was that there was a very clear and significant bias in prevention questions and promotion questions based on the gender of the entrepreneur who was presenting. And no surprises, 67% of male entrepreneurs were getting promotion type questions and 66% of female entrepreneurs were getting prevention type questions. What she also discovered that really surprised her was that female investors were also asking prevention type questions of female entrepreneurs and promotion type questions of male entrepreneurs. But the greatest piece of research that she found, or the greatest finding that came out of her research was regardless of the type of question the entrepreneur was asked, if they answered in a promotional way, as opposed to a preventive way, they were 14 times more likely to get funding. So for those of you who are out there pitching, no matter what kind of question you get, answer it in a positive way. It's kind of like politicians, you know, never bother to answer the question you're asked, just get the message across that you want to get. So that was a fascinating piece of research. Uh, two other things that have come up in the last quarter. In fact, one, one, of, one of them just in the, uh, came up yesterday and one of them came up last week. Um, so in the United States, um, so far this year, more than $7 billion has gone into venture capital funds that are female founded and focused on investing in female entrepreneurs. Um, it's still only 7.3% of the total, but it's gone a long way from where it used to be and a long way from the historical trend where female founders were only getting 2% approximately of funding. So there's now $7, .7 billion, this is in the USA, um, but $7 billion has gone into female founded venture firms. And yesterday it was announced that the first all female focused uh, venture capital fund was launched in Germany. It's called the OXO Female Catalyst Fund. That's A-U-X-X-O. You can Google that and um, have a look at that. But that literally was announced yesterday. And I have a call with the, the um, uh, founding partner of that uh, in December. The other report that I picked up on that came out in um, uh, earlier this month was just shocking. And this was looking at, at the racial uh, bias in the system. So it looked at VC funding to black female founders between 2009 and 2019. And over that decade, only 10 black female founders got funding from VC in the UK, which is just staggering. So I'll be delving into that more in my book, but I just wanted to highlight that as some of the research that's coming up. Now, my second to last point 
is just to quickly take you through our agenda. Um, so we have six speakers today, uh, and each of them will have a, 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 a session where they'll, they'll speak to us for 12 to 15 minutes, and then we'll have five to eight minutes of Q&A. Uh, that applies to five of them. We also have a, a special guest speaker in the middle. So my team members will be introducing each of our speakers as they come up. Um, but I'll just let you know that the first two are both investors. Uh, one is a partner at Bethnal Green Ventures in London, and the other is a partner at a firm called TSVC in Silicon Valley. Uh, so we'll be getting an American perspective and a UK perspective from an investor's view on that. So really looking forward to that. We'll then be taking a 20 minute break. So one of the pieces of feedback we've consistently had is that everyone really enjoys the breakout sessions and that chance to network and meet new people. We're actually gonna have three breakout sessions during the course of today. So the first one will be after the two investors have spoken. Then we'll come back and we have our special guest speaker. Um, I won't say any more about that. And then we have uh, two, oh, sorry, we have, a, we have our first founder before our special guest uh, speaker. Um, and uh, she's the founder of a, of a business called Nosh Detox. Uh, then we have the guest speaker, then we'll be doing our second break. Um, and then finally, we'll be welcoming back our last two speakers. And for those of you who were at our first event at the London Stock Exchange, I'm delighted to say that for the first time, we are welcoming back one of our speakers. So for those of you who were there, you rem may remember that in the uh, panel of investors, we had an angel investor called Laura Harnett uh, giving her perspective as, as an angel. Uh, Laura has since gone on and founded her own company. And so she's now gonna be coming and talking to us about her perspective as a founder and entrepreneur. So really looking forward to that. We'll then have one final break um, and then I'll do some closing addresses and tell you more about where we're going.